How you guys doing? We have 15 people sitting here waiting for me to begin, which I think is the most we've ever had, waiting for me to begin, which gives me hope that we might actually break an important barrier tonight. I want to get more than 100 people watching live. We've gotten 90 before. I think the highest we've got is 92. We have yet to get 100. Uh, I don't know what incentive I can give. If we get 100, I'm going to give away a hat, away hat on Twitter tomorrow, Chargers hat. Um, and I'll give you guys, all 100 of you, uh, a clue as to um, what trivia question I'm going to ask tomorrow uh, so that you guys can have a head start and can win the hat. It's a pretty cool hat, actually. All right, let's get started. Uh, let me look through your comments. You guys hate my nicknames. I don't care. I think Tom Terrific is a fantastic nickname. Um, everyone's very happy with Tom Terrific. Not the name, but the guy. Okay, three obvious questions from Boltman84. How does Freeney fit? Does Pagano run more than four th run more four three than we expected, or can he be effective in our three four? I expect Dwight Freeney to be used as if he were Antoine Barnes, if that makes any sense. Um, but also not. Antoine Barnes couldn't cover for shit. He was terrible at it. So really the only time he was on the field was as a pass rusher. The team did everything in their power to make sure that Antoine Barnes never had to cover anybody. Which sucks. When you're running your defense and you're trying to hide someone like that, trying to make sure that someone on your field isn't doing a certain something, it doesn't really end well. But I think that's what they're going to try and do. And I think one of the ways in which they're going to do that is by running a lot of 4-3. Because as a 4-3 defensive end, Freeney's never really going to be asked to cover. Um, Jared Johnson has is the, the wild card guy there. He can be the outside linebacker. He can be the blitzing outside linebacker, or he can be a defensive end. He's sort of played all three. Um, Donald Butler, you know where he's at. And the other outside linebacker spot is, is going to have to be uh, Manti Teo, I guess, unless someone else steps up. But, yeah, I think they're going to run a lot of 4-3. Um, I think Kendall Reyes could still be an effective pass rusher out of the 4-3. I think Corey Legit and uh, Cam Thomas – can be, I mean, they, they both have history of being really good 4-3 defensive tackles in college. So I think there's going to be a lot more 4-3. Um, but I don't think they're just going to do it to play to Dwight Freeney's, you know, his abilities as a pass rusher with his hand on the ground. I think they're more going to do it so that he doesn't get roped in any situation where he's covering a running back or a wide receiver or a tight end because that, that would just never, ever end well. Um, what were your other questions? Gilchrist or Taylor? at strong safety. Uh, Michael Gelkin seems to think that Brandon Taylor is going to be back before the regular season. That being said, I don't think they would have moved Gilchrist's position unless they were pretty confident that he was going to be the starter and keep that job. So Gilchrist for now. Do I think cornerback is our biggest hole right now? I think pass rush is still the biggest hole. I really do. If they added Freeney and they still had Ingram, I wouldn't be worried about that. But Freeney to Ingram I don't think is that much of an upgrade. Uh, and I, I've always been worried about the Chargers pass rush in 2013. I still am. Um, and I think that's – I don't think it's worse than the cornerback situation, but I think it's a more important position to, to be strong in. If that makes any sense? You can survive without a strong secondary. The Patriots have been doing it for years. But you can't really survive without a strong pass rush. Um, so I think we're going to find ourselves bitching about the pass rush more over the course of the year. But yeah, there's there's nothing at cornerback. There's Derek Cox and a bag of rocks. So I like Derek Cox. Um, he's kind of like an Antoine Quezon that we don't have any nightmares about. And that's, that's not a bad cornerback in the league. I mean, a lot of people wanted Drake Florence gone when he left because we had all these bad feelings about him. And then when Cromartie started playing, 
playing like crap. We wanted Drake Florence back to replace Cromartie, who stole Drake Florence's job. So, <clears throat> you know, the devil you know and and all that sometimes is, is it's the opposite. Sometimes you want the guy that, that you don't know. Sometimes you want the guy that looks as good on paper as the guy you do know but doesn't come with any of the old fears and hatred. But, no, I, I don't think... Uh, I don't think Derek Cox is, is a legit number one. 2014 strong safety. That's a great question. I think it's Marcus Gilchrist. Shut up and get to the actual Chargers talk. Oh, that's when I was bullshitting. Starks or Dunlap at left tackle. Uh, whichever one stays healthy through training camp is the real answer there. Are we okay at the number two cornerback spot? It makes me nervous. Don't you love the O-line depth versus the last two years? O-line depth in, in 2011 wasn't bad. Um, I actually kind of liked it, truth be told. Uh, 2011, we still had Dealman. We had Tyrone Green as the backup guard. Um, you know, we had uh, Merchkowski was still there, the inside. Dombrowski, we still had faith in, could be a tackle. Um... There was a lot of good things happening with that team, and they still had, you know, McNeil, Clary, uh, Vasquez, Dealman, and, and Hardwick as your top five. So I, I like the 2011 line better than this line, but it looks like the 2013 line is better than last year's. Um, the number two cornerback spot I, I, I kind of talked about a little bit, but look, Sharice Wright is kind of like Max Starks at this point, which is weird because one's a veteran and one's a really young guy. But both of them have the potential to be good. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not they're going to be good, and you, you can't really tell. Jared Johnson can't blitz. I wasn't saying he would be an effective blitzer from there, but blitzers out of the 4-3 is a whole different ballgame. Like, blitzers out of the 3-4, it's usually one of the four or five guys rushing. Um, the defense is expecting it. Uh, if the outside linebacker is blitzing in a, a four three, um, you know, they're you're at least the fifth guy, maybe the sixth. It's it's a whole different ball game. Pretty much anyone can blitz out of the outside linebacker spot on the four three. Because even if you're just taking up blockers, it, it helps out the the line, which is just a bunch of guys that can beat one on one matchups. <clears throat> In a 4-3, Teo is the middle linebacker. No way Butler can handle the coverage responsibilities. You really think Teo's better than Butler in coverage? I thought Butler looked really good in coverage last year. Maybe that's just me. All right. Um, so we kind of talked about Freeney. We kind of talked about Starks. Um, I'd like to talk about the fact that Tom Telesco did free agency backwards of every fan ever. Every fan wants to sign every big name free agent on day one and spend a ton of money. Tom Telesco spent very little money, got hardly anyone on day one, um eventually picked up Danny Woodhead. We thought he was going to be the big name. And then waited until the only guys left were the guys that couldn't get any of the money they wanted. And then just started picking big names out of that hat. That's cool. It's a cool way to go about it. I don't know if it'll work, but it's a cool way to go about free agency. Um, it works if your draft is good. If your draft isn't good, it doesn't work. And it also works if, I mean, you got to hit on at least 50% of those free agents. Like, out of uh, Freeney and Starks, one of them is going to have to be above average for the team to even stand a chance to get to eight and eight this year. So it, it's and but if they don't, then they're not very expensive. Starks is a one year deal, Freeney is a two year deal. Neither one's very expensive, so you haven't crippled yourself trying to do it either. Which is the, the name of the game in free agency: get good players, but don't sign contracts that could cripple you. Who do I think our primary crash it up the gut running back is going to be? Hmm. 
you think Matthews is more of a speed and finesse guy. You want Gronkowski or McLean to be the the main running back? Are you kidding me? <sighs> okay. So Ryan Matthews was drafted as high as he was because he can do everything. He has the speed. He has the finesse. He has the power. He has the quickness. He can do everything. He can catch the ball. He can block a little bit, although Norm never gave him credit for that. So the reason guys go that high, the reason guys – give me a second – Sorry, that was bothering me. The reason guys go that high, the reason guys take that number one running back position is because they can do everything, and then the defense never knows what's coming. The defense doesn't know. Are they going to run it up the middle? Are they going to run it outside? Are they going to throw it to the running back? Is the running back going to stay in and pass block? So I think Ryan Matthews is going to have to be that guy because Woodhead – is not your running up the middle guy. McLean can't run it outside or catch. Gronkowski obviously can't run it outside. I don't know if he can catch. He probably can't run it inside either. So Ryan Matthews pretty much wins the number one position by default because he's the only guy that can do everything. Okay, so I argued that we'd be left with cold garbage if Telesco waited to this point in free agency. There's something to be said for that. We kind of picked up cold garbage. Um, here's the thing. At that point, the beginning of free agency, I was looking at it like, who are the guys that Telesco can sign that can ensure that we compete this year for something? Over 500, playoffs, whatever. And I figured anyone who wasn't one of those guys, anyone that wasn't giving the Chargers a chance, that, that, actually anyone that wasn't ensuring that this was an 8-8 eight eight quality team was cold garbage. And Dwight Freeney doesn't do that, and Max Starks doesn't do that. They don't ensure shit. Because quite frankly, frankly, both of them sucked last year, kind of. So both of them have potential to be good. They've been good in the past, but... They also have potential to be nothing, to never be good ever again. They could both potentially be washed up. So Telesco picked up some cold garbage that, you know, could possibly be thrown in the microwave and be good for a bite or two. God, that is a really disgusting metaphor. But you, you get the idea. It, it could possibly be something which at this point in the game is all you can hope for. And with that kind of salary cap situation, it's all you could hope for. I mean, when you look at the salary cap situation, it is very obvious that A.J. Smith thought that this team was competing last year and this year. He built that way. And maybe he built it that way because he knew it was his last shot, and if the team didn't win the playoffs last year, he was out anyway. So just spend, 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 because why not? But this team has so much money tied into veteran players that, quite frankly, aren't as good as they're getting paid for. Rivers isn't as good as he's getting paid for. Gates isn't as good as he's getting paid for. Um, Hardwick is arguably not as good as he's getting paid for. So, And Spikes wasn't. Bigby obviously wasn't. Uh, Jammer wasn't, but he's gone now. But, you know, A.J. Smith built this team on, you know, we're going to spend all this money because we're going to compete. And, you know, the, the problem with that is if you don't compete, now you have no salary cap situation to fix it. So, luckily, the, the back door was built in for 2014. So if this team doesn't compete this year, they can cut Rivers for nothing. He has nothing against the cap next year. He saves the team $15 million next year and $15 million the year after if he gets cut after this year. Gates is the same thing. So, except it's 10 instead of 15. So the back door to, to get all out of all the veteran contracts without killing yourself is next year. 
So Telesco collected a few pieces with the minimal cap space he had and said, okay, I'm going to give them a chance. If McCoy and, and Wisenhunt and Pagano can put together something with these guys, then maybe we'll find a way to try and make it work next year. But if we don't, then we get a whole bunch of cap space next year. We can do whatever we want with it. We can rebuild the team from the ground up the way I want it. Because right now all he's doing is building on A.J. Smith's team. And if that team he decides isn't any good, if that team isn't any good anymore, Tommy gets to build his own team next year. Yeah, what I said on the UT thing... Because it was it was in response to RJ's fro. RJ's fro said what the team should do instead of hide Teo is they should just let him out, let him go out there and talk to the media, and then it's going to be done. And I said the problem with that is that the fact that he got catfished in the first place proves that he, he was he was not bright. You know, who gets fooled that badly? Someone who's not very bright. And so that was my argument for not just handing him over to the media and saying, well, ask him any question because it'll be fine. Like, chances are he would say something really stupid. He might be really intelligent on the football field with a playbook, but in real life, in front of the media and all that, he's probably dumb. So the Chargers are training him right now. In the same way they're training him on the field, they're training him off the field. But, yeah, I said that he was probably dumb. Okay, better word for it. He's naive. We're not talking about Sproles up the middle, nor of his gond. Name our starting four wide receivers in order. Oof. Boy, that is rough. I almost hope one of them gets injured. Um, you can take Royal off that list. Uh, number one is going to be Floyd. I'm really confident of that. Number two, hoo, 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 hoo. I don't know how crazy I want to get with this. Number two, Vincent Brown. Boy. Uh, number three, we'll say Denario Alexander because I think he's going to get the third most playing time of all the wide receivers. But usually your third wide receiver is the slot guy, and I don't think he's going to be the slot guy. I just think he'll sort of switch with Floyd or he'll switch with Brown a lot because um, I think the slot guy is pretty consistently going to be Meacham or Allen. I think Keenan Allen could be a decent slot guy as well. Um but I, I, those you have those six listed: Alexander, Floyd, Meacham, Royal, Brown, Allen. I, I think those five minus Royal are probably those are the top five wide receivers. Can it be argued that because of his sheer size and what he had to do for a mobile quarterback, Dunlap may work a tad better in our system? <sighs> what if by some miracle both tackles stayed healthy? Could you give a preference of starting a starting left tackle then? <sighs> I mean, Dunlap and, and, and Starks are both gigantic. There's not a big difference in size between the two of them. Starks has the, the experience, which you kind of have to go for. And, you know, I'm, I'm tired of people giving Dunlap an excuse because he played with a mobile quarterback. Do you understand that, that Ben Roethlisberger, like, holds the ball longer than any other quarterback in the history of football? It's horrible watching him play. He never gets rid of the ball. And then he does these back-breaking plays when the play breaks down 40 yards downfield. So Starks was just as challenged, if not more, than Dunlap to put up good stats. So I give it to Starks because the experience. 
Experience means a lot at that position. Before the draft, it appeared Telesco was aiming to win next year. What changed? Nothing changed. Like I said, I, I think he's, you know, he's trying to give his guys a chance this year. Because why not? If he can, you know. But, and, and if you believe that the new coaching staff can do enough with Rivers and Gates and a new offense and Pagano can do enough in year two, then, then why not give him a chance? But giving them a chance hasn't crippled himself next year. Like, he, was, he wasn't aiming to win next year. He was aiming to rebuild next year. And he still is. He, he still left himself in a position where he can rebuild next year if he needs to. Do I see Jammer playing on any NFL team this year? Good question. Oh, man. No. No, I don't. That's sad. But no, I really don't. Moves now seem pointed at winning this year. Do you think that Tom believes they can truly contend this year? I don't think he does. But you don't leave your team without a single pass rusher. Because then they have no chance. You give your team a chance without crippling yourself in the future. Tom didn't hurt his future with, with the team at all. He didn't hurt his future cap situation. Nothing about it changed at all. All he did was he found someone to replace Ingram, which he needed to do to give the team any sort of a chance, and he found someone that could possibly fill the left tackle hole better than Dunlap for one year for what I imagine was a cheap contract, although I haven't seen the actual dollar amount yet. $1,000 to anyone that gets Rivers in a Raiders lid. Not happening. Why do I feel the Chargers never trade for picks and players? If Gates and Rivers were gone, wouldn't we try and get something for them before cutting them? No. Yeah, it doesn't happen in the NFL. Because teams know you're going to cut them anyway. Also, here's the thing. If you cut Rivers... It's because you don't want to pay him $15 million this year, and you don't want to pay him $15 million next year. Chances are, other teams in the NFL don't want to pay that either. So they're not going to trade for him and give up, give up picks or players to pay him that amount of money. They'd rather you cut him so they can then work a deal to pay him $4 million, $5 million, $8 million a year, something that makes more sense. But you have to realize that Teams aren't going to trade for contracts you're trying to get out of because they would want to get out of them too. Didn't Teo already deal with the media? Yeah, he had one day of 10 minutes with after the first day of OTAs. Yes, he did. But now he's not allowed to. Does Jammer end up back with us as an option at safety? Don't see it happening. I see Jammer ending up back with us as a, a fourth cornerback, if anything, but I don't think either him nor the team would do that. Should Starks be exciting when no one else seems to want him? Um... I think that's a pretty good answer. You know, he's he's a big upgrade over he's a big upgrade at left tackle for us where he wouldn't be for a lot of teams, but I think he was also looking for the right situation. You know, he wanted a team that was willing to give him a chance to start but also could compete this year. And you try and find me another team in the NFL that could compete this year and didn't have a left tackle that they were confident in starting a week ago. There's not. So it's a perfect situation. What are the chances Ingram plays at all this year? Oh, let's talk about that. Because uh, it was a, a Gelkin article about it that, that made it very clear. Um, Melvin Ingram said he wasn't ruling out this year. He thinks you know that the recovery time he, he could 
be healthy by November and then work himself and his leg into game shape sometime in December. And at first it seemed like the article was trying to point to, like, he could come back. And then Gelkin got a quote from the team that basically said, we understand that Melvin's future is very important and we're not going to risk that. So the team basically said, even if he could come back in December with a leg that's 80%, there's no way we're putting him on the field. Like, they're writing off this year and saying, we want 100% Melvin Ingram next year that's had a whole off season to work himself into shape and, and repair his knee and all that. So zero chance Ingram plays this year. What kind of impact do you see Rivers and Gates achieving to justify them staying with the team next season? Gates? I don't know. I mean, Gates has to probably be one of the top five or six tight ends in the league to justify staying. Um, Rivers, his case is a little stronger. If Rivers... I mean, let's be honest. Last season, the year before, 2011-2012, Rivers pretty much led the league in interceptions or was close to it. And the team lost a lot of games because Rivers couldn't keep from turning the ball over. So if he can stop turning the ball over, and because of that the team wins a few more games, Rivers will stay. It's all He just has to get rid of the turnovers. Will we run any no huddle this year? Norv was the only guy in the league that I thought didn't run a no huddle, so I'm assuming that there's going to be some sort of no huddle in the offense. Not a lot of it, but I'm assuming there's going to be some of it. Um, you know, Mike McCoy, I'm sure, saw a lot of the effect of it with Peyton Manning last year. Uh, so I have to imagine he's going to work that in somehow. Is Jammer worthy of a ring of honor spot? Uh, probably not. He's close, but probably not. He's the second best quarterback the team has ever had. Does Gil Bird have a ring of honor spot? If he does, then Jammer's on the fence, but if he doesn't, then there's no way. Do you think Mike Harris has any potential at all in the next three or four years? No. If he had, you know, the size of a Jared Gaither or a King Dunlap, then yes. But he's an average-sized player with below-average talent, um, and I don't know what Norv Turner ever saw in him last year except for the fact that he wasn't Jared Gaither uh, or any of the other veterans that they signed that were lazy as shit. So, no, I don't think Mike Harris has any potential. Do you think the talking heads who pronounce Teo, Teo as Teo subconsciously think of him as the second coming of Junior, or are they just idiots? I think they're just idiots. Starks, is he a pickup for running, passing, or just desperation hole filler. Boy, that sounds like a porn title. Um, I think Starks helps running and passing, and he was a desperation hole filler. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I think, yeah, I think he's an improvement over um, pretty much everyone on the roster for run protection, pass protection, blah, blah, blah. Although, if you look at the pro football focus numbers, King Dunlap was a much better pass protector. So, maybe I'm wrong about that. How does Michael Hill have 0, zero as his number? Thought the NFL banned that. Uh, if you're seeing that on the Chargers website, it's probably a sign that someone forgot to put his number in or maybe he doesn't have one yet. Um, he's not allowed to have 0, zero as his number. As a running back, you can only have a number in the 20s, 30s, or 40s. Yeah, Freeney was also 0 0. These are just guys that haven't gotten their number yet. Do you think guys like John Phillips, Gronkowski, and Woodhead, to a certain extent, who were brought in because they can block outside of the line, 
will actually help the line much more than what we already had blocking outside of the O-line. Um, yeah, as a simpleton pointed out, Randy McMichael was a really good blocking tight end. Um, I think John Phillips just sort of fills in that way. Uh, Gronkowski is, I, I guess, an improvement if he makes the team over over um, McClain. Uh, but that's not a sure thing. Uh, and Woodhead is... I don't know if Woodhead's any better of a blocker than, than Ronnie Brown is. So, no, I don't think they're going to have that big of an effect. Chad Reinhardt or Johnny Troutman has more talent at guard. Can we assume Clary will have a starting guard job? If so, who takes the other guard spot? Um... Here's the thing. So Mike McCoy, when asked about uh, the offensive line, keeps saying that the best five guys will play. The best five offensive linemen will play, and that's it. But, you know, he had to pick a, a starting five for day one, and he picked Fluker on the right, Clary at right guard, Hardwick in the middle, Chad Reinhardt, left guard. Uh, left tackle was King Dunlap. Might be Max Starks now. Now, it's really hard to lose your job as an offensive lineman during minicamp. It's really hard to lose it during training camp, unless you're not there. Uh, it's really hard to lose it in the preseason unless you get horribly embarrassed which rarely happens. So I think the guys that they've chosen as the starting five are going to be the starting five unless there's a injury or just a horrible game for someone. Uh, and the horrible games rarely happen to guards. So I think Chad Reinhardt's your left guard, Jeremy Clary's your right guard, until one of them gets injured, like pretty seriously injured which isn't going to happen until maybe the preseason. Dunlap push Fluker in third down situations. Yeah, you don't sub in offensive linemen when it's third down. Yeah, you can maybe put Dunlap in as a tight end on third downs, but you don't put a tackle in as a tight end unless you're at the goal line, uh, or unless it's an obvious running situation. You definitely don't do it in a passing situation, because in a passing situation, you want the, the defense to not know who might be a receiver and who might not. When you bring in Dunlap, they know he's not going to be a receiver, so you would only do it in a goal line type situation, or like, you know, third and an inch, fourth and an inch. Don't think we're getting back Jacob Pastor. You ran into Jammer at your local sushi joint a couple months ago, huh? I like Quentin. I like Quentin a lot. I think Quentin's a really good guy. I think he's a great dad. Um... I like Quentin a lot. I would love to see Quentin do something in football. I'd love to see him become a secondary coach or something like that at some point. Um, I'd love to see him get picked up by someone this year, like a contender, like a Niners or a Packers or someone like that, just so he can be on a winning team, be like the fourth cornerback on a winning team. I'd, I'd love that for him, but I just don't know that he fits in with this team. get Jammer for dirt cheap and he brings competition and a possible backup spot. Well, here's the thing. Um, well, as A.E. Simpleton, who's answering every question, pointed out, uh, he gets the veteran minimum, which is a lot of money. 
Um, at the very least, he gets that. And he, uh, maybe they don't want a challenge for the number two spot. Maybe they think bringing in Jammer, who was, you know, the top cornerback last year, is going to throw Sharice right off his game. Um, or, you know, maybe Jammer just wants a guarantee that he's going to be a top three cornerback and they can't give it to him. I think that's probably more likely. By the way, we are at about 60 viewers. We've been growing little by little. Like I said, if we get to 100 viewers, I will give you guys some sort of clue about the trivia question I'm going to ask on Twitter tomorrow. Uh, the first person to correctly answer the trivia question will get a Chargers hat from New Era. Really nice Chargers hat from New Era. I'll send it to them or I'll bring it to you or whatever. Um, so, if you guys want a shot, if you want to hear the trivia question before I ask it on Twitter tomorrow, so you have the answer ready and you can boom, boom, get a hat, free Chargers hat. Uh, it's actually the hat that DJ Fluker was wearing uh, at the draft. Not the exact hat, but the same kind of hat. So, I don't know. Tweet out a link to this. Tell your friends. Put it on Reddit. I don't care. Just get us over 100, and I'll give you guys a tip on my trivia question, which I haven't picked yet, so you'll get to watch me pick a trivia question, too. McCoy utilizes tight ends a whole heck of a lot. Okay. Yeah, I don't see the Chargers using the unbalanced line and, and bringing out Dunlap as a tight end a lot because I don't think they're going to be a power running team and that's, you know, that's usually something a power running team does. We at 100 yet? No, where are we at? We're at, we're still at 60. Oh, what was this question? I missed it. If Alexander continues his production trend from last year, will we trade him to the Niners for a pick in November, December? No. No, 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 no. Not at all. I know you guys love the idea of trades, and I do too, but they don't happen. Yeah, plus terrible knees. Who is ahead of the rotation, English or Kaiser? Yeah, Larry English. You guys are all over this. Jammer said the Redskins were interested in him. Uh, the report about Brian Erlacher talking to Denver was apparently a fake thing reported by a blogger, and the Denver PR guy went off had like one of those chill pill type moments totally went off on Twitter about bloggers making up information because of that so that wasn't happening I believe that the Redskins would be interested in him if only because AJ Smith is there um, I don't know what their situation is but you know they haven't signed him yet We have fans all over the place. One of these days I want to do, like, a map and have everyone that visits Bolts from the Blue just put on the map where they're from because we got to be all over the place. I used to think that was because when I started this thing, when I started, well, when I took over Bolts from the Blue, I lived in Philly. And, you know, Bolts from the Blue, Chargers blogs in general, the Chargers were my connection to home. And now I'm realizing that, you know, BFTB and, and the Chargers are a lot of people's connections to home. So we have so many fans from around the country, around the world. It's crazy. But we're a much bigger community than I would have ever thought. Do you think special teams will cause any problems this year compared to the debacles of seasons past? Um, 
It was only one year with debacles. That was 2010. Uh, new special teams coach this year, so who knows? Anything can happen. But the team in 2010 was historically bad. I believe that was the worst special teams in the history of football. So do I think they'll be that bad again? No. Oh, why do we have to go bash on Reddit now? Does anyone see Kaiser Soze contributing meaningfully? Or is he just another outside linebacker? He's just another outside linebacker, but we don't have a lot of those, so he could end up contributing meaningfully. If for some reason Manning went down for the whole season in the preseason with an injury, who wins the AFC West? Oh, that is an impossible question to answer. Give me a second to think. Chiefs have Alex Smith and Andy Reid. The Raiders have the 15-year-old kid from Denver and the backup quarterback from Seattle. The Broncos' backup quarterback is like the six foot nine giant who stinks. Could be the Chargers. Could be the Chargers if Manning goes down. Thoughts on Charles Woodson to the Raiders? I hate it. He's a good football player right there. The Raiders have just been adding... The Raiders have had a fantastic offseason. Fantastic. They had a really good draft that I liked. And even though they haven't been signing big names, they just keep adding good players, and I hate it. Ever since Reggie McKenzie took over, that's like a good team now. I hate it. They're going to get there at some point, and I'm... Ugh. It's going to be awful. Could we finally see something from Larry English if we run a lot of 4-3? I don't know if the 4-3 would be kind to Larry English. Um... It's not he, he he was drafted as a 3-4 outside linebacker because the thought was he was too small and and not long enough to play 4-3 defensive end in the NFL. So and then he he wasn't good enough at at 3-4 outside linebacker because he wasn't quick enough fast enough. So I don't know if putting him in as a 4-3 defensive end makes him better than he's been as a 3-4 outside linebacker. Which two inside linebackers will stay with the team as backups? Well, first of all, they're probably going to keep three of those guys. Because you'll have your two backups and you'll have your special team stand out. Um... They love Brom Bird. He'll be there. Gatch Carr is a special teams knockout. Uh, I think Mouton. I don't think DJ Smith is healthy. So those are my three. If I had to knock one of those off, it's ugh. I have no idea. I I don't know who I would knock out of those three. Does English have what it takes to be an above-average outside linebacker if he can stay healthy and he is used in the right ways? Um, yes. GTR Donald just wants to talk about my shirt. I'm not doing that. I believe the trade deadline got moved back. I don't think it's in week six, week six anymore. I think it's in like week eight now. It used to be in week six.
Um, no, uh, the Kaiser guy in Carolina played a little bit of um, defensive end, defensive tackle his first year, and then his second year uh, pretty much exclusively played 3-4 outside linebacker. I want to ban Richard for bringing up all the pro bowlers on the Chiefs. What are our chances realistically to clinch a wild card spot? There's Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Indy, us, possibly the Chiefs. Writing off the whole AFC East, huh? And South? Oh, I guess Indy. Oh, and you're giving Baltimore the North. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Hard to say at this point. 10%, 10 chance of clinching a wild card spot? I don't know. I mean, a lot of teams that make it in the playoffs, it's just luck, you know? Ball has to bounce your way. You have to get the right call. Switching back to Powder Blues in 2014. I wish. Not going to happen. Do I see any surprising cuts before the Final 53? There's always a surprising cut before the Final 53. There's 90 players on the roster right now. They basically have to cut a half of them. There will be a surprising cut in there somewhere. If Vincent Brown gets the number two spot, do I think he gets a thousand plus yards? No. Uh, is Kwame Gaither is the likely number two defensive tackle. Do they have anyone else? I mean, I, I think he has to be. I don't think they have anyone else. Mike Royce is worried that Mike McCoy will suck. He has a feeling. What do I think about McCoy after he gets a couple of seasons as head coach under his belt? Wizenhunt, did I just call him Wizenhunt? Wizenhunt calling the plays hurts or helps the Bolts. You think McCoy is just not a strong play caller or just has a different style? Um... I think Mike McCoy and Tom Telesco and Dean Spanos believe that having a head coach is focused on the little things instead of focused on the offense helps. And I think that's why Mike McCoy has that position. Uh, I think Ken Wisenhunt calling the plays helps because I believe the same thing that they do. I don't think Mike McCoy will suck, but I'm an optimist. Um... Yeah, I think I answered all your questions. That was a weird question, Mike. How many wins is Freeney worth? <sighs> Considering they had no pass rush without him? Four or five? Vincent Brown officially has two legs. What kind of coach do you, what kind of coach do you McCoy being? I think he means do I see McCoy being? Um, I don't know. Isn't every coach generally the same at this point? They scream about some things. They're quiet about others. I mean, I guess no. Even like Tomlin is. Everyone's you know like quiet at certain points. They scream at others. I think he'll be like that, just like every other coach. Will the Chargers let Hard Knocks in this year? Also, will Nike get their hands on our jerseys next year? <clears throat> Nike already got their hands on our jerseys last year and this year. Uh, as 
far as the Chargers letting Hard Knocks in, I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me. We do not need Leron McLean for anything. He is so very washed up. I take the over on, if Vincent Brown is the number two wide receiver, I take the over on 500 yards. I think he's, I'd take the over on 700. Oh, now we're saying he might not be healthy. Um, I'd still go over on 600. Yeah, I'd go over on 600. 700, I wouldn't be sure. Yeah, Floyd gets about 80 targets, 800-ish yards. Brown can maybe do that if he's healthy. Nike's not going to do the Seattle treatment to the Chargers uniforms because the Chargers owners aren't going to let them. Seattle's a whole different ball game. Their, their owners, their fans, their players, they all like that ridiculous look. The same way, uh, you know, the Oregon Ducks fans love their ugly uniforms. Chargers owners don't. They want classy. They want it to look like a football uniform, so it does. Okay, uh, we got about 10 minutes left. I know I usually go past 8, and maybe I will go a little past 8. Um, but, oh, the Padres are losing. It's a bad excuse for leaving. Uh, but the sports page with AC and Annie is on in 8 minutes, and I'm on it again. So I feel like I shouldn't run over that uh, for fear of hurting their ratings. Are we at 100 people yet? Nah, we went down. Now we're at 50. You guys are going to play trivia along with everybody else. If by some miracle John Abraham isn't signed by the time Gaither's money comes in and the Chargers signed him, would it basically be playoffs? Yes. Not going to happen, but yes. Pro Football Talk asking for Chargers Mount Rushmore votes. Uh, me and Richard decided who would be on the Chargers Mount Rushmore on sometime last week. Uh, it was... I'm sure he remembers better than I do. Um, Coriel... Um, I said Allworth... Oh no, Coriel and Seau were the two locks. Um, my other votes were, I think, Allworth and Tomlinson. Uh, he wanted Fouts and someone else. Um, but definitely Coriel and Seau. I like Allworth and Tomlinson for the other two. But that's just me. If Rivers is gone next season, is there anyone in the draft or free agency whose contract might be up Do you think the Chargers might pursue? Well, good quarterbacks don't become free agents. They're not allowed to walk, so it's not going to be a free, it's not going to be a free agent. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there'll be someone in the draft that I like. Mike Herman. Maybe it'll be Mike freaking Herman. Love Mike Herman. No one's watching UTTV regardless. You guys just going to wait until I post the video somewhere and watch those seven minutes? It is rough. I tried watching the I did watch the first night. And it's an hour-long show, and we were the last five minutes of it. And the rest, like, AC and Annie, good when they're on. Good enough. Um, but oh, there's so many commercials. There's, like, six different news breaks. Uh, and the news breaks are just weird. Um, I think they throw 
Kaplan, who's a racist in there at some point to pro promote his show the following day. It's just there's a lot of going on. There's a lot going on that's not the sports page, and that stuff stinks. Tuesday. We decided on Tuesday. Gilman over Coriel. Richard was trying to make an argument for that, too. I don't buy it. Coriel changed the face of football. Yeah, whatever. Pro football talk is is terrible and getting worse. Oh, okay. Did I touch on everything that I said would be on the agenda? Freeman or Freeman Freeney, Starks, Ingram. What else was there? My time on UTTV, which I guess, who cares? I think I touched on about everything. All right, let's do the lightning round. Yeah, it's an hour. The sports page is an hour. It's a rough hour, too. Um... Anyway, let's do the lightning round where you guys get to ask me anything about anything for about five, ten minutes. It's my opinion exactly. I like AC. I like Annie. Bloggers are fun. All the other stuff in there, which it was a lot of. Do you catch like the local business guys that just got to sit there and tell you what their local business was? Just Doug Manchester sucking up local businessmen to have their votes for something. I don't even know. For a Republican president. Um, there's a lot going on there that wasn't good. Anyway, lightning round time. Send me your weird questions about my cats or what I'm wearing or my stance on polo shirts. Okay, fine. Sid Gilman instead of Coriel. You guys win. I really see Whitehurst on the team this year. Do the Bolts go into it with three quarterbacks, put Whitehurst on the practice squad, or Herman to practice squad? Whitehurst cannot be put on the practice squad. Not allowed. Um, Herman would not make it to the practice squad. At all. Not even a chance. Uh, three quarterbacks is an option. I also think it's an option to just cut Whitehurst and, and go with two, but we'll see. Feelings on Erlacher retiring. I think he's a Hall of Famer. Like to see that he left before he was embarrassed. Oh, Herman will absolutely kick ass against third and fourth stringers, and it will be awesome. How am I able to afford living in San Diego? Um, I'm not. I'm, I barely am, and I work about five different jobs. Uh, so that's how. Does that really say, can we just cut Clary already? Does that really say that? Are you kidding me? You have to be kidding me. That has to be a joke, right? Why would we cut Jeremy Clary? I'm taking that as a joke. <laughs> the local businessmen were very awkward. How much will it affect the 49ers with Crabtree out for the year? A lot. A lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Like, a ton. Like, that changes their whole offense. Like, enough that they're going to have to go out and sign someone and hope to replace him. That much. Um, how nervous was I during the UTTV thing? Uh, I was nervous on my way there. Um... I guess I was a little nervous while I was doing it, but like I wasn't as comfortable as I am now, but I wasn't like freaking out or anything. 
Stone IPA or Arrogant Bastard? Oaked Arrogant Bastard, sir. Marcus Cromarty. Thoughts? I love him. I love Marcus Cromarty. I'm really hopeful that Marcus Cromarty can make the team as a fourth cornerback and develop his skills because that's a future starter in the NFL. I 100% believe that. Say something about scoreboard. Um, I had a meeting with a guy yesterday who told me that uh, he's trying to teach scoreboard how to how to be cool, and I laughed for a good five minutes because that guy is still very much a walking calculator. Ever been to Hodad? Went to San Diego once and got told to try it. Line was insane. No, no burger can be that good. The burger is not that good. The burger is good, but it's not that good. And yes, I've been to the Hodads in Petco Park, and I've been to the Hodads downtown. I have not been to the original Hodads in OB. Biggest breakout player on both sides of the ball next year, or two players that need to step it up the most on both sides of the ball. Let's do breakout players. Um, Danny Woodhead. If that makes sense. I don't know if he could be a breakout player. I think he's going to be huge for the Chargers offense this year, and I think fans are going to fall in love with him. So that's going to be my breakout player. Um, if we're just going like people that we didn't know they were that good and then they proved it, uh, Keenan Allen. Um, on defense... I don't know. Are we going to be surprised if any of those defensive linemen are great? Probably not. Um, I don't really want to go with Gilchrist. I'll go with Sharice Wright because I think he's going to be solid. How could you not freak out with Annie right there? Uh, you know why? Here, this is why. Because I like Annie. I appreciate Annie. She good looking woman? Yes. But I try and make it a point to not objectify Annie because she's in a very male field. Very male field. And all anybody wants to talk about is how hot Annie is. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, but she's really good. She has really good reports. She knows sports as well as I do. Um, she's very knowledgeable. She she's funny. Like I I look at Annie the same way I look at AC. Uh, so that's why. And then with AC's a pretty lady as well. So that's that's why I didn't freak out with Annie right there. Is because you know I was just sort of like, wow, you're you know you're really talented. But I wasn't like, oh my god, you're so hot. Because I I I don't think of Annie that way because there's so many other people that do, and it makes me feel terrible about men in general. It's a weird thing to say during this football podcast. But that's why I didn't freak out with Annie right there. Or say anything terrible. Which, by the way, the other bloggers totally did. But I did not. I was nice about it. The Bolts powder blue jerseys are elite in the league. They're simply awesome. NFL's top 10 rated them number one. I don't really see why they don't go back to them. Yeah, because of money. Because they make a lot more money by not going back to them. What did I have for dinner tonight? I made pasta with tomato sauce. Like a good Italian boy should. Is the only way the Chargers get a new stadium in San Diego is with a Super Bowl win? No. They're probably going to get a stadium in San Diego. They don't need a Super Bowl win. Phil's barbecue is better than Hodad's. How are you rating barbecue with a burger place? Stop it. How can you love a player that you have yet to even see play? Because I'm rooting for him because of his story. I like all the different dimensions he brings in. And he has crazy potential. You can't deny he has crazy potential. With his size, his arm, his mobility, he has crazy potential. 
how do I expect the Eagles to do with Chip Kelly really well, just maybe not this year. Ladarius Green breakout player. Probably not as the third tight end. Okay, Woodhead is too good to be a breakout player. Um, DJ Fluker, how about that? Why did no one get John Gruden when there was so much speculation over him returning? I didn't even hear about him interviewing with anyone. Um, well, okay, partially because of what A.E. Simpleton says. He's crazy. He wants too much money slash control. Um, two, because he's not a good coach, and everyone knows he's not a good coach. Uh, three, um, because ESPN's contract says that they don't have to let him go if they don't want to. And why would they want to? So he's not going to go anywhere. So why waste the time? He just likes his name being in the media. That's all he does. Herman would not make it to the practice squad. He got signed to a $1 million contract. Signed away from the Raiders. Do you think the Raiders wouldn't pick him up in a heartbeat? Do you think there's not five other teams in the league that would pick him up? I know you love disagreeing with everything I say, Donald, but... He wasn't just an undrafted free agent that walked onto the field. He wasn't a tryout guy. He was a guy that teams were bidding over. Guys like that don't make it to the practice squad. I'm glad Richard enjoyed my story about scoreboard. Five Guys is okay, but it's not as good as In-N-Out or Hodads. Stop it. Philip Rivers cannot be a breakout player on offense. You're crazy. <laughs> oh. John wants to do AC is the most typical comment I've ever seen on this site. All right. I know my cat just me out. Are you excited? He's also getting antsy trying to jump in front of me and walk on my computer because that's what cats do. DJ Fluker will be a horrible pass block blocking rookie this year. Eventually a decent to good one at least. I think we'll be fine this year. See, that's the thing. I don't think he'll be any worse than Clary was last year, if that makes any sense. In Clary, we lived with Clary. Clary was fine. Monday night football or Sunday night football games? Yeah, I prefer Sunday night to Monday night. I hate Monday Night Football games. I don't know why. I just do. I feel like there's not enough going on in the rest of the NFL. Sunday Night Football also has a much better team feel. I love Costas. I love Dan Patrick. I love Tony Dungy. I never thought I would say that. but So, so do I think Herman makes the team over Whitehurst or what? I think he has a chance, yeah. Seems a little crazy. Did we ever make it to 100? Nope. Still stuck at 55. Now we're making kitchen nightmare jokes. I did watch that episode. That other lady was nuts. All right. Sounds like you guys are running out of weird questions. And... Padres are probably still losing. But the sports page is on with AC and Annie. Um, I forget what this segment is. I remember Rick from our days for always wearing the Raiders hat. It's pretty much all I remember from it. I don't remember which thing we debated. Uh, but I remember at the end saying something that basically made AC speechless. So I guess it's worth watching for that. Or you can wait around. We'll post the video tomorrow. All right. Uh, I 
think I just saw one more question. Miami is actually proposing that aircraft carrier game you did as an April Fool's joke last year. I think San Diego will get in on the fun. Too dangerous. Never going to happen. Never. Miami's just crazy at this point. It's a crazy team owned by a bunch of celebrities spending a bunch of money. They're crazy. They're shooting crazy ideas to stay in the media. So don't worry about that. Aircraft carrier game's not happening. That's why we did it as an April Fool's joke. It's never going to happen. When will I finally have guests on my show? When I feel like it, damn it. I can't find a site with Mike Herman's college stats. Do you know them or know a link? Um, yeah, I'll reply to you. I have his stats somewhere, but I'll reply to you and show you. Um, thoughts of draft at May. I don't know what that means. Why would Herman going to the practice squad be an issue? Because to make it to the practice squad, you have to clear waivers. It basically means that no other team in the entire league wants you. Um, and that's not going to happen because there's other teams in the league that want Mike Harmon. Oh, the draft in May instead. I got you. Pushing the draft back. Um... I don't know. It's a cool idea. I like it. I think it would screw up a lot of GMs for a couple of years, but I like it. All right. Are we done? I think we're done. All right, guys. Um, good show. Way to contribute. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do one of these next week. It would help if the Chargers broke more news. That gives me more stuff to talk about, but... We'll see, maybe. Um, I'm going to be gone for about two weeks in a couple of weeks, so maybe I'll try and do one every week up until then so that you guys don't miss me too much when I'm gone. All right. Uh, good night, everybody, and 